Hey, what's up, GQ? I'm Jerome Jerome, and these are my essentials. Yay! This is my brush. My hair kind of goes from really long or really short, just back and forth all the time, so this kind of keeps it in control. So whether it's short, whether it's long, it's fresh, it's smooth. So it's a little hair this way, a little bit that way, front, and I do a little turn. So I get the curls to puff, and then that's it. And that's how I use my brush. What do you use for your beard? Same thing? Nope. <laughs> There's a big difference between the regular brush and the beard brush. So the beard brush is smaller. Gets the actual little corners of the face. You know what I'm saying? If I use the big brush, it'll kind of just have a big, so the smaller is much better. It's more contained. It's cuter too. It also looks like a toothbrush, so people ask me why I put my toothbrush out on the train. But it's a beard brush. And I put it to my face and it makes sense. It's actually my rumors, and now it's mine. Yay! Lip balm. This is extremely key for me because the amount of times I have seen myself in a film or a show and I have the most chapped lips I've ever seen is very embarrassing. When I watch myself, I'm like, Jarrell, did you forget your chapstick that day? And I probably did, so now I don't forget my lip balm. I always, like five times a day, put on my lip balm so my lips are not chapped. Is the Kiehl's one your go-to? Yeah, I think I just got put onto this like a month ago. It used to be the average chapstick, you know, the regular one. Then I had Blistex and Carmex. I tried them all, really. But this one's my favorite because it's kind of it kind of makes my, my lips look really glossy after. Looks like I just kissed somebody, you know? I always have lips that look like they just got kissed. You got a text. Who is it? I did get a text. It's my sister. And we're going to meet up tomorrow. She gave me a thumbs up. She doesn't say many words. I'm like, hey, I can't wait to see you. Oh my God, it's been so long. That's her response. But my phone, I guess just like everybody else, is extremely important. I never leave without it because pretty much my entire mental state is on my phone in terms of family, in terms of my team and my career and the work I have to do. But I also make music, so I write all my music on my phone. I actually have it in the notepad section, which is risky because I don't want to lose all this stuff, but pretty much a ton of just different ideas and lyrics and stuff that I do. And I'll just be in an Uber or walking down the street and I'll have an idea and I'll just put out my notes app and I'll just start typing. So my phone, I cannot go without. This essential is really close to me and special to my heart because it's my, uh, it's my grandfather's watch. It's a Gucci watch. I'm not sure the exact year it's from, but it's really old and very vintage and it's kind of messed up a little bit, but um, he passed away three years ago and um, I feel like a big reason I'm here today is because of him and I think he's watching over me and guiding a lot of the decisions I make and the moves I make. And so I keep this um, in any hotel room or any apartment I'm in. I'll keep it on the nightstand next to me and I'll never wear it. I might wear it maybe for a really special occasion, but um, the plan is to really just keep it everywhere and not wear it, you know? It's um, super special to me and I miss my grandpa, you know? Another essential of mine is, I mean, it's clothing, uh, pretty much. Like, I've been trying to clothes shop a lot lately because I'm getting tired of all my old clothes and fall is coming, so I'm trying to find a whole new fall attire, including this blazer, which is from Banana Republic, and I have not taken it off since I put it on because um, it's fresh as hell, and it feels really nice, and it keeps me warm at the same time. So just in general, a whole new attire of clothing is definitely necessary. So this is this is step one. Also, corduroy always makes you feel like a boss. Actually. Like a boss. I feel like I need a cigar in my hand and just to light it and, and you know, not listen to anybody's questions. <laughs> Another really special one for me is a photo of me and my mom from 2010. It's dated in the back. It's all blue now because I kept it in my jeans in high school, like all of freshman year, no one knew. I think if anyone found out, I probably would've got bullied. But I held a picture of me and my mom uh, just every day in school for the beginning because it was the first time I was really stepping outside of the Bronx and like not being around family. So I felt like if I had this in my back pocket, I felt close to my mom and close to my family. So she said, 
to the best son in the world. I am extremely proud of you. Do your thing, baby. You got this. And she was saying do your thing because I was about to audition for the high school that I went to. Um, I was 13 years old and it was called LaGuardia High School and there's this is intense audition process you have to go through. So she gave this to me and I got into every school I auditioned for that year with this in my pocket. So, yeah, very essential. A baseball cap, a specifically champion because champion's been fire these days, but baseball caps are very essential to me for several reasons. One, if I don't have my brush, I have to put a hat on because my hair gets so wild, so a hat just, it just swags you out. It makes you look dope and cool. Plus, lately, I've been getting weird stares from people from across the street or just from across the way from me. I'll be at an airport sitting down and someone's like looking at me like. And so, that's when the hat goes from like here to down here. And then the longer the stair goes, it gets lower. And then she keeps looking, it's just straight up down here. But you can't do that with like this bucket hat or a bandana. You have to have a baseball cap. And so, baseball caps. Major essential, my Beats headphones. Uh, music's just a huge part of my life. I am obsessed with music, it makes me feel better, it makes me think clearer. And like I said, I make my own music, so when I make my own music, I feel like it's medicine and therapeutic for me. I just stay with my beats on all the time. Like, I just realized when I was posting my stories the other day, I posted a story with my Beats headphones on, and I realized it was like the 10th story post in a row where I had my Beats headphones on. It looks like I'm just listening to music 24 seven, which is probably true. So, essential. Another essential for me is um, this medallion that Corey Wise gave me. Corey Wise, if, if you don't know who he is, he's the man I portrayed in the Netflix show When They See Us. And the first day I got to meet him was at a table read and I read the script out right in front of him. And I looked at him and he was crying his eyes out. Um, he's a man who was falsely imprisoned for years. And so hearing the words of the script made him cry and made him emotional. And I remember coming up to him like, just speechless, like I don't know what to say or what to do, but I didn't have to say anything because what he did was he took the medallion off of his neck and he put it around mine. And he was like, you're Corey Wise now, you're the king now. That moment spoke volumes to me, especially prior to shooting the show. Um, I think it pushed me and motivated me a lot. And then it went way beyond just the show. For me, wearing that medallion gives me strength and courage. It makes me feel like I could be as strong as he was through the time that he was falsely imprisoned. So um, I like to keep it on me. If I, if I don't get the chance to wear it, I keep it on my dresser. And I, I just, um, it's a great reminder that you could be way stronger than you thought you ever could be, you know? What did it mean to you to play Corey Wise as a native New Yorker? It was definitely e extremely important because I felt like I got to tell a lot of stories um, of the folk that lived across the street from me or above me or below me or, or, or wherever. This story is so prominent in New York and um, the kind of story that you see and when they see us happens every day, especially in New York City. So to be a native New Yorker, um, be able to sh share this plight with, with other New Yorkers is definitely a blessing and I'm glad I did it.